just a good old boy. Well, y'all were back bailing hay today. Uh, I'm hoping to get done with this. One way, I don't want to be done with hay, and another way, I'm ready to be done with hay. Um, just because We've been baling hay since April, and it's fixing to be November. Kind of like it's just like last year, and uh, it's fixing to be November. Um, so I mean that's what April, May, June, July, August, September, October. That's uh, eight months of harvest. Any of the grain farmers out there, I want y'all to think about that. Eight months of harvest. <laughs> Eight months. <laughs> Golly. Um, and that's not even counting all the prep time. We started in January taking soil samples. And then not at the first of, I think it was around the first of February, we started spraying and stuff. And get well no first of February we started fertilizing getting that done and then middle of February we sprayed all the way till uh, we started baling in April and we've been baling since April now it's looking like it's gonna be November before we get done And then we've also been planting for next year. So we've done actually already started prepping for our 2020 uh, hay season already this year. And uh, we have been busy. And as soon as we get done with this, um, between now and Christmas is generally when I like to try to kind of slow down just a little. A slow down, let me rephrase that. Slow, well, yeah, slow down is a good word for it because there ain't no stop. I mean, we have we deliver hay all winter to customers. Uh, as the hay business has grown, that's gotten to where it's a whole nother animal uh, that we do, uh, which is good. Don't get me wrong, it's all good that, that we do that. Uh, and that's a whole nother animal that we're up against after we get done bailing, which it's already started delivering, and uh, then we feed cows, and we have to catch up, try to play catch up on everything with the cows, uh, getting all that done, and we never really get a true, I guess you could say, break. Um, now this hay here is third cutting. Um, it is, not very heavy. Uh, we only fertilize once in the spring, and that's it, uh, unfortunately. I wish that we could fertilize per, uh, each cutting throughout the seasons, uh, but we just do not have the equipment or the facilities to hold the fertilizer. Um, in order to do that, it's hard to get fertilizer put on for me, because uh, we're, it's got to where it's just, it's, it's so suburban now here. There's not a lot of places that sell fertilizer and stuff. And it's hard to get it exactly when you need it because a lot of people that sells it are also in the hay business and they're baling hay at the same time. It's just hard to get it. I would love to have a wagon and buy the fertilizer in bulk, and then I could come in and put a, uh, put a, some, put some on it after each cutting. And it would be a lot more beneficial to us than putting it all at one, all at one time. I know that. I want to get there eventually, but I mean, it's all it takes time and then it works. You can't do everything overnight and just go out and, and just throw the dice at it and say, I hope for the best, because if you do that anymore, you're not going to win. <laughs> but it's 50 meets a chance, you're going to lose, and that means lose, lose, or you're going to. There's a 50% chance you might win, and uh, you can't. It's hard to make a living anymore doing this. And the Mar, uh, the I heard Cock Top the other day in his video. He was talking about uh, just how thin the profit margins are in logging. Logging is basically uh, farming. 
I mean, they grow the trees, they go in, they harvest the trees, and they sell the trees. Now, that's a form of farming. I mean, I know it's not grain farming or something like that, but really it's tree farming is what it is. And uh, in farming, the profit margins are super thin. It, it don't take much to make you or break you. You've really got to count, uh, dot your I's and cross your T's and everything. And uh, we, we're very, especially the way ag is right now, there's just not a lot of money floating around to play with. So we're very precise the last few years where we put our money and what we're doing. Um, that is something that in the future I want to do. Right now it's not an option. Uh, just because the setup that I, we want will cost something. Um, update with the cattle working area. Uh, we're trying to decide what we want to do as far as the barn itself because we're either going to have to add on to the barn or we're thinking about maybe possibly getting another carport building kind of like what my shop is but one that would actually slide underneath the roof line of the existing roof and just let it run off on it and not add on it be a full steel building and it would probably uh, we've kind of been pricing around and see what's cheaper if we just build it or if we do that um, it's looking like that's probably going to be a spring project or early spring, like March kind of time, and maybe we'll just have to wait and see how it works out. Because with all we've got going on right now, it's just this fall, it's not going to happen. And in the winter, it really don't want to be out there fooling with that thing in the winter. But you never know. We may it may become a late winter project. We'll just have to wait and see uh, how things go whatnot but it's not going to happen in the next month or two anyway uh, we just got a lot of irons in the fire we're trying to get done now we've got to get caught up on a lot of things and uh this hay uh, we should be done with hay we should have finished with hay two to three weeks ago um we would have had plenty of hay but I, i'm gonna we made a bad decision as a whole we all did and we messed up and we we did not bail 60 acres of hay on a farm that we have and when we should have and we thought that we were going to have so much hay that we wouldn't need to do that and we would just take the hay there. Well, that backfired. Um, we're selling a lot of hay and it's looking like we're, we're probably 60 exactly what it would have been on that short on cow hay and uh we're trying to scrape up what we can off these fields that kind of come back after second cutting uh and get what we can off of them. ain't a whole lot here but i'm going over several of them just scooping up what we can to try to make up and make the damage as small as we can and a lot of y'all probably think it was just 60 acres hey well yeah it on one cut well, yeah, it is just 60 acres of hay, but we try to figure exactly what we need to do because I don't want to bail. I don't sell. It's, oh, well, we used to didn't sell a whole lot of cow hay, but it seems like late uh, last couple of years, we've been selling a lot of cow hay. Uh, we can sell more than we actually do, um, but... I would rather sell it as quality hay because I can get a better price for it than I can as cow hay. So I don't really try to bale any more cow hay than I need plus a little bit. Um, and the people that do buy from us, we have to keep up. They're expecting us to have the hay. So that's the dilemma that we're in. I can't just shut them off because then they, they're gonna, it's going to be tough on them to find it somewhere else. So. We're a little short, um, but not a whole lot, so we're trying to make up for it by doing several of these fields here. I do have some new ground we're supposed to be baling if it works out, but it is flat ground. Um, and it's wet, it's been raining, uh, it's crazy. This weather we have here is just, it's either bone dry this, this year, this year, last year it was just a like a soggy sponge all the time this year 
it's either been bone dry for a month or it's continuous rain nearly for a month. There, there is no in between. So, which was good in the early season, but now in the later season, it's kind of uh, biting us in the rear end because we're in a wet period now. And we didn't get a whole lot of rain uh, there on the last go around to make it come back for a third. And third, you really need a lot of rain to make up for our fertilizer shortage. Um, to get a cutting and then again I didn't think I would be doing a third cutting. Uh, normally we only do two cuttings. It seems to work out the best profitability wise here to do that even if you do come back and fertilize again just to do two cuttings. And as far as yields and everything. And the soil, what you have to put back in the soil as far as the nutrients in the spring, it just it, it seems like our soil handles two cuttings they produce really heavy on the first, on the two those two cuttings a year, and it's better just to do that because if you do three, I've noticed it really takes a lot out of the soil and you have to put it back, um, and then it becomes more cost expensive doing three. Um, so I try to do two. We're getting to where we're doing a lot more three, um, which may mean we're going to have to come back and start doing more fertilizer in the later in the summer to get a good third cutting on some of these fields so we don't have to go over so many of them. Um, and it, it's just a, it's constant battle. <laughs> I mean, it's just a constant battle. And, uh, but uh, we should have been done. It's our fault. We should have had plenty of hay. If I just bailed that hay, I would have been done and it been fine. Wouldn't even thought twice about it. Would have been perfectly fine. But now, I'm a little short, and it, well, the problem is there ain't a whole lot here, so I'm having to cover more ground to get the same amount of hay, or close, or at least half the hay. I'm having to cover more ground just to do that. So it, it ain't that big of a deal, but another thing too is the fields I'm having to do it on aren't exactly the best uh, fields for time uh, and getting over them, and then they're scattered all around is another thing. So. It, really not covering that much ground it's just taking us a long time to get around to do to get it i guess is my point but anyway whatever we'll get it done i ain't worried about it we'll just do the best we can and that's what we can do and we'll figure it out i mean it is what it is it's just another day farming and ranching i mean it's just part of it there's always something but i am looking forward to possibly taking a break after we get done bailing and maybe do some more deer hunting and, or something just to kind of take a break kind of get a little recharge on the batteries the expo was kind of a little bit of that it was nice to go down there for the two days that we took to do it uh well really it was a day and a quarter or a day and a half uh, really to go down there so uh, and then the funny thing is you can leave for a day <laughs> and it seems like you've been gone a week when you get back with all the crap there is to do just because you wasn't here for a day and you're playing catch up over one dang day like crazy. So it, it's just the way it is. <laughs> See y'all later. Thank you for watching. <laughs>